Genesis chapter 8, Genesis chapter 8, verse number 22. Genesis 8, verse 22 says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. While the earth remaineth, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Amen? So we're talking from the subject matter of seed, time, and harvest. Amen? And it is the will of God that we understand this principle of seed time and harvest because this is how the kingdom of God operates. And if we can understand this principle of seed time and harvest in every area of our lives, not just one area, but all the areas of our lives, uh, we will be the better, amen? Go to Proverbs chapter number 11. Proverbs chapter number 11. Amen. Sowing is to plant for growth, especially by scattering. Sowing is to plant seed for growth, especially by scattering. Amen. In Proverbs chapter number 11, look at verse number 24. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 24. Look what it says. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. The Amplifier says, There are those who generously scatter abroad and yet increase more. There are those who withhold more than is fitting or what is justly due, but it results only in want. The liberal person shall be enriched, and he who waters shall himself be watered. Amen? So if I sow, the Bible says, that if I scatter abroad, then it shall return unto me. I'll increase, amen? So when I, when, I, when I sow my seed, I have an expectation of harvest, amen? Giving is not complete until receiving takes place. Now, we talked about that even in our relationships. If I give in my relationship, I have an expectation of return, amen? And so many of us need to understand that, that when it comes down to relationships, that it's what I put in, I can have an expectation of getting out. Amen. And women have been designed, brothers, women have been designed to take what we give them and multiply it and give it right back to us. Yeah, they've, they've been designed. They're receivers. And whatever we give them, they take that, multiply it, and give it back to us. So if we give them a lot of love, they take the love, multiply the love. And give it right back to us. Now, on the other hand, if we give them hell, they take the hell. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's the sowing and reaping. Amen. Amen. Now, on, go to Galatians chapter number six. Galatians chapter number six. Galatians chapter number six. But but none of that, none of the, none of the second part of that happens here, right? Praise the Lord. Amen. We, we always giving the love, the love, amen. It's the love, amen. Galatians chapter number six, amen. Thank you, Trin. She said, that's right, pastor, that's right. Galatians chapter six. Look at verse number seven, Galatians chapter six, verse number seven. Look what it says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life er everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 7 says, whatever I sow, that is what I'm going to reap. Amen? So if you look at your life and you're not satisfied with the harvest that you have, look at what you've been sowing. Amen. Because you have whatever you sow. Amen. 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 Now, on last week, we begin to talk about understanding the, the sowing process. Amen. The seed, sowing seed process. Amen. Now, every seed that we sow is already pre-programmed with increase on its mind. Amen. Every seed, whether it's a relational seed, whether it's an economic seed, is already pre-programmed for increase. That's God's plan. If you look at the law of Genesis, 
everything that God created, he said, I put a seed in it to reproduce after its kind. And God said, and it was good. So when it comes down to us sowing seed, whatever the seed is, it's already pre-programmed to reproduce for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, we also said that you determine in advance the size of your harvest. In advance, you determine the size of your return. Amen? Go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I can't blame anybody else about my harvest because I determined in advance on what type of harvest or the size of that harvest I wanted in my life. Amen. Again, and this is in any area of our lives. I determined from jump when I, when I married Sister Gwen what kind of harvest I wanted in my relationship. I wanted peace and tranquility in my house. So I sold peace and tranquility in my house. Why? Because I wanted a big harvest. Woo, praise the Lord. And after 22 years, I ain't arguing or fuss with the girl that one time. Ain't no need for that because I said I wanted peace. I sold peace. I got peace. Ooh, praise the Lord. Where I told you how to go? 2 Corinthians chapter 9, chapter 6, chapter 9, verse 6. Uh-huh. I determined in advance the size of my harvest. 2 Corinthians. Let me get there. Chapter 9, verse number 6. But I say, uh, uh, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall do what? Reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall what? So I determine my harvest, amen, the size of it. If I want a small harvest, I, I sow small. If I want a big harvest, I sow big. That's the law that God places in his word, amen, amen. Now, 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 mm, mm, mm. okay, let's talk about, let's, let's talk about sowing money and what I can get back for that, amen? We talked about relationship for the last two weeks. Let's talk about money now, amen? When it comes down to sowing financial seed, God sets out a law called tithing. And many people always look at tithing as losing because they don't see the benefit in it. Because nobody takes the time to show them that this is the benefit. They always say, they just read the scripture and say, well, give all the tithe unto the Lord. And, that, and that's all they hear. But they don't hear the benefit of it. And so, therefore, they don't want to participate in it. That's why in most churches, only 20% of the people give the tithe on a regular basis. The other 80% are spotty givers. Well, what do you mean by spotty givers? You give every now and then? When you feel like it? Well, if you understand the law, the law of seed time and harvest, if I begin with the tithe, then God has some provisions for me as a tither. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, giving money is not a matter of money. It's about the matter of the heart. Amen. Amen. It's never about the money. Because I've seen in the Bible where there was a lady who only had a little bit. And her heart was right. She gave that a little bit, and Jesus basically asked the question, who gave the most? Either the ones who was throwing much in or the one who gave the little? And Jesus said, this woman here gave the most. Yeah. Amen. So it's never about the, the money. It's about the heart of the matter. What is your heart like? 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Look at verse number 12. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 12. Are you there? Look what it says. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he had not. The Amplifier says, for if the eager, uh, for if the eager readiness to give is there, then it is acceptable and welcome in proportion to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. So God says, if I have a willing mind, in other words, if my heart is right, he's not looking at the amount that I give, he's just looking at whether my heart is right toward giving. And really, when it comes down to seed time and harvest, people don't understand that God is looking at the heart. 